I'm now planning to give you an introduction about the discipline of metrology. A metrology can be described as something uh, multidisciplinary that covers both uh, uh, physical detector technology as well as electronics, but also computer uh, science and computer technology. Uh, <clears throat> we can think of uh, using sensors for measuring various physical properties that we combine with electronics for signal processing and then further on with uh, uh, computers, uh, small embedded computers for data processing to create value that represent the measured physical properties. And these values can be fed to uh, industrial uh, control systems. It could be part of uh, uh, some embedded equipment in your home, home appliances, uh, washing machines, uh, vacuum cleaners. Uh, it could be related to your car. You have lots of sensors in your car. Or it could even be some data that you actually share on uh, social networks uh, with your friends and your, your social network. Uh, so <clears throat> I give you an introduction about what is actually a sensor, what, how do we define a sensor and why do we need those sensors and I will give you a short introduction to a, a kind of a general model for a measurement system and we should also analyze and think a little bit about in what uh, kind of context are these measurement systems actually used. Uh, I would say that a sensor uh, is aimed at converting a physical quantity into a scale of value that is carried by an output signal. And since, since this course is focused on electrical metrology, the output signal is an electrical signal that carries the, the uh, information about the measured physical quantity. But of course it could also be an uh, an optical sensor where the output signal is actually an, an optical signal carried by uh, optical fiber. Uh, physical quantities that we can think of could be uh, pressure, temperature, flow of, of gas or of, of liquids, uh, height, weight, volume, we could measure motion or acceleration. The uh, conversion of physical property to electrical signal is ideally uh, a linear function uh, with, a, with a known uh, coefficient and possibly also with a known bias. Uh, we can further uh, classify the sensors into being either active or as being passive. And <clears throat> an active sensor is a sensor that can convert the energy of the input and they do not need to have any external energy to be working. Example of such are photodiodes for measuring the light intensity or a thermal element for measuring the temperature difference. A passive sensor on the other hand uh, is a sensor that converts physical quantity by using external energy so we need to have an external power supply in order to make the sensor to work. Example of such are photoresistors or different kinds of resistance thermometers. This is a picture of a Citroën. It's a reasonably modern car and in a modern car we will find loads of different kinds of sensors. I've just pointed out a few examples here. Um, we have here a rain sensor in the windscreen for measuring when the rain starts to fall and it will activate the wipers. Uh, we have sensors for measuring the, the wheel rotational speed. Uh, we can have wireless sensors inside the tires for measuring the tire pressure. Um, parking sensors, ultrasonic parking sensors that will warn when you come too close to uh, another uh, object, car or person. We have sensors for the fuel level, uh, oil level, coolant water temperature, uh, brake fluid level, coolant level, airflow, 
fuel flow and loads of different kinds of sensors and they are all connected to um, small embedded computers that are further connected to each other in a kind of a local area network that is covering the whole car. Uh, it's a very very complex sensor and uh, a, a system uh, that contains a lot of uh, sensors that can also handle very crucial uh, um, functions such as the automatic brake systems or anti-spinning system for the wheels and so on. Very very uh, uh, how to say crucial safety systems that improve the performance, the safety performance of the car. We can further have a look into uh, different kinds of sensors that can be used in um, sport technology for maybe improving uh, uh, improving performance of your training. This running runner we see here on this picture uh, he is equipped on his body with a lot of different kinds of sensors he can measure and record uh, while he is out uh, training and running uh, the ambient air temperature ambient pressure and humidity in the air we can measure the body temperature the breathing frequency uh, pulse uh, and blood pressure we can record GPS data to have a track of where he has been running and how far and how high speed. We can use uh, acceleration uh, detectors to measure the actual acceleration force in legs, in arms and different kinds of activity sensors. And this can be used as for, I mean, I mean, to improve the performance of your training. Uh, it can be used for medical purposes to uh, kind of a, a, a telemedicine to follow up the health status of a person on a far distance from uh, the doctor's uh, office. Um, we can think of using uh, these uh, sensors for monitoring your training uh, and you would like to share this data on a social network with your training friends. Typical such examples we can see from companies such as Garmin who sells this GPS watches for uh, tracking speed and distance of your running and you can download the uh, map of where you have been running and how fast and compare with your friends on a social network. Uh, this is the future my friends of metrology and a ex very good example of how the metrology has been developing in the last decade. I think now is a time when we can have a little bit of closer look into a, a general measurement system and see what kind of components we can find inside. And first of all, I would like to say that we have, of course, this sensor that we have defined as the component that can convert a physical quantity into an electrical signal. And sometimes this electrical signal can be such weak and, and tiny so we need to uh, amplify it using an electrical amplifier to have a range of the uh, output signal that can in a good way fit the input uh, window of an uh, analog to digital conversion the A to D converter but before uh, the signal is reaching the A to D converter uh, it is strongly advisable to use a, a filter and the filter of, uh, the purpose of this filter could be like twofold um, first of all we need to have something that is called an anti-aliasing filter to make sure that the um, frequency bandwidth of the signal that we are feeding to the A to D converter uh, can be completely converted by the converter and its related conversion frequency we need to comply with something that is called the shannon nyquist uh, uh, sampling theorem. Uh, and beyond uh, the uh, sampling uh, theorem, we also could use possibly the filter to improve the signal-to-noise ratio to suppress the amount of noise compared to the amount of signal that we are actually interested in by using analog filtering technique. Uh, 
The reason why we convert uh, the analog signal into a digital signal, and which is a, a sequence of numbers basically. And this sequence of, of uh, digital numbers can then be used by an embedded uh, computer for further digital signal processing. And then depending on what kind of application we are using this uh, measurement system, uh, it can be connected to some industrial control system or it could simply be connected to a display unit or some other kind of, of host system that is connected to this measurement system. Uh, <clears throat> uh, quite obvious and uh, simple example could be this digital uh, meter for measuring uh, amps and voltage and resistance and this is a measurement system that contains an uh, embedded computer and it's connected after signal processing uh, to a display unit for a visual uh, display for the user. We just define sensor in combination with an embedded computer, signal processing and data processing as a measurement system. But if this measurement system is connected via a communication channel with a larger host system, we can also view upon this small measurement system as a smart sensor. Uh, a sensor that has the capability of processing data locally. That's why we call it smart. It has the ability to process data locally, possibly also refine the data and send it through a communication channel to the host system. Uh, this uh, host computer uh, typically runs a program that can collect, process and display results of measurements from several different kinds of sensors and possibly also uh, affect some process by using actuators. Actuators that take an electrical signals as input and create some motion or physical change on the output. Could be an electrical motor that possibly affects a valve. It could be a power supply that affects some setting in the process. Uh, a waveform generator that generates a waveform that can possibly affect the process. An oscilloscope is a definitely a local uh, embedded electronic system that can be seen upon as a smart sensor or the multimeter, this meter that can measure voltage, amps and resistance can be seen as an, a, a small a smart sensor. Measurement systems are also a crucial and very important part of uh, uh, a control system in industrial processes or it could be control system for some sensing purpose in your car or within your home appliance, the washing machine, um, whatever. And we can see here a diagram for the, rig the control of a process. So this is the process under control. And one crucial function here is to be able to measure the physical properties of the output of this process which create a feedback loop and uh, we measure the physical properties of the output of the process through a measurement system that has of course the sensors and the embedded electronics and so on. And we have the feedback signal that is compared with the reference that we give to the process control that we want to achieve this level of the physical output property. And the difference uh, between the actual value of the output and the reference level that we actually want to achieve, that error signal is given to the controller that actually defines in what way uh, the control, uh, uh, the different signal is actually going to control the process, giving a control signal output that actually affects the process. But it would never be possible to, to uh, control the process unless we have the measurement system that actually are able to uh, convert the physical uh, property that is related to the process into an electrical signal that can be compared 
with an electrical reference signal. So the measurement system uh, is a component that is part of the feedback loop of uh, a process control system.